Marlon, how's it going? Going well. Congrats on the new deal and coming back to Indy. Um, first time as a free agent, I'm curious from your end how it went and, and what were your expectations before the process started? Was Indy really where you wanted to end up? And what was the interest like from outside teams and how did you end up with a decision? Uh, there was a few interests from other teams. Uh, Indy was always a place that I would like to come back to. Um, it was just being patient out there, just listen to what teams have for me and and he was the best for me, and I feel like it was the best for me. Man, my agent sat down. I feel like it was the best decision for us to come back, and that's what we did. Mike Chapel. Yeah, Marlon. Again, congratulations and welcome back. Where are you right now in your rehab? I mean, it's been what was it September? What can mm -hmm. you do, and what what timeline are you looking at? OTAs, training camp. Where are you? Uh, I'm in a good spot. Um, just gotta get back in the training room and they'll let me know. But I've been killing it, man. These past few months, I actually just left Indy kind of like late March, uh, the beginning of March. So just gotta head back now, and, and and I should be good to go pretty soon. JJ, hey Marlon, uh, wanted to ask you about what it, what was it like for you last year watching <laughs> the the backfield kind of take off, but. Was it bittersweet at all for you, given what happened at the start of the year? Uh, yeah, it was kind of bittersweet, but I always knew and it, it was going to take off. I've been been said it. It was just just patience, man. And and once it blossomed, it blossomed, and it took off. I just wish I could have cheered a little bit more. But on the sidelines, I was and watching from home, man. I did the best I can, but I just knew it was going to take off like it did, and, and you just had to be patient for it and uh, let it come. George Bremer. Marlon, uh, Jonathan Taylor said that while you were around during the season, you were still giving the running backs tips, you know, staying in their ears, staying a part of the team. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that process like? And then how excited are you to, to be part of a, a running back group that looks like it'll be pretty strong next year? Uh, yeah, man, it was, it was just a good experience. Just, just letting guys know what I would have seen or did. It's just it's like it's always good to hear somebody else's opinion on things, uh, especially you don't always want to hear from a coach. So you just want to hear sometimes from guys just watching on the sidelines or just watching film on his own. You just it's always good to hear something in your ear. So that was just a, a good thing, I guess you could say. It just I just can't wait to get back and actually help on the field this time. Dave Griffiths. Hey, Marlon, kind of piggybacking off that question, uh, have you heard from from those guys, from Jonathan, from Naheem, over the past couple of days since the news of you re-signing has, uh, has come out and what, what oh, kind yeah. of conversations have you had? Yeah, I got a few text messages, guys texting me, could Jack, uh, congrats and things like that. You know, get back to the work, you know how he was uh, in training camp last year. Jim Ayala. Hey, Marlon, congratulations on the deal. Um, so what, what was it like, I mean, for you right after the injury? I mean, it looked like you were, I mean, from our perspective, you were on social media cheering for your team and all that stuff right mm -hmm. away. But, what, I mean, the mental process of having to go through an injury like that, what was that like right after that happened for you? Uh, yeah, the mental process was tough. Um, the first the first week, it was it was tough, happily. Uh, just testing and just coming in and just, you know, you not be able to go on the field again for, for a while. So, but I say just going around actually just, actually keep me keep going in the building really helped me out and actually talking football with the guys each and every week that helped me a bunch because if I was just sitting at home and and not talking to nobody seeing the guys in the training room and the guys keeping my hopes up man it would have been pretty hard on me but me actually coming in the facility every week those guys kind of helped me out also so that was a, a big plus for me my chap Marlon, there was a lot of talk going into last year. They call it the one-one punch of you and and Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what next year is going to be like? Will it be one-one huh, again? I mean, Naheem Tat yeah. is coming off a great year. Yeah. How do you fit uh, with, with this good deep group? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I know Frank, Coach Frank. Uh, those guys go cook something well for us. Uh, you know, it's only one ball, but those guys going to take care of each one of us and. We know go we go make it work, you know. As long as we get to that one thing, our one man go, man, that, that, that Super Bowl. I think we all gonna be good and happy with it. They made it very clear that they're gonna run the ball. Yeah. That's gotta just be. <laughs> it, it brings a smile to your face. Uh, yeah, exactly, and, and and that's one thing we like <laughs> like to do. Jack Kiefer. 
So Marlon, just to get this straight, you were, I mean, you had to take COVID tests every day to get mm -hmm. back in the building. I'm just, what was September like for you? What was October like for you? I mean, uh -oh. just were you just, in the meetings Were you weren't on the practice field watching, but just what was that like? Uh, just kind of some days I'll pop in the meetings. So it would be like, uh, probably pop me for a little bit, go to a team meeting every once in a while. But I just like text the guys after the game, let them know good job and things like that. Uh, how they could have did a, not how they could have did, but some I seen out there or anything like that, just helpful hands that on the field you see. You were one of the biggest um, supporters and cheerleaders of Jonathan Taylor early in the year. Mm -hmm. What was it like watching him develop as a rookie? Because it wasn't just a straight, you know, progression. He had some bumpy mm -hmm. moments, and then he really busted out at the end. What was that like for you? Uh, it was great, man, because – Especially my rookie year, uh, I had Frank in my ear, uh, Frank Gore. So it was great to see, man, because I just you had to keep telling him just be patient, man. And guys was chewing him out, but he, he kept his head down, man. He kept working, and he blossomed to a, a, a great back, you know. And it was just patient like everybody was telling him. So it was good to see. Ken Bone. Hey, Marlon, congrats on the new deal. Um, you mentioned some interests from other teams. Were any of those interests maybe a chance to be a definite starting running back, whereas here uh, you, that might be Jonathan? I, I don't I don't think so. Uh, guys is uh, saying get a chance to uh, work in the starter position, but none of them was a definite starter, so. Taylor Tannenbaum. I know Indy is ultimately where you wanted to be when it was all said and done in the process. Why, though, was here where you wanted to come back to? What about Indianapolis? What about did it have a lot to do with your recovery process and just knowing what was here? Is it the camaraderie in the locker room? What exactly is it for you specifically? Uh, just the family, man. Um, guys in the locker room, training room, just know we can get taken care of here. Um, it's a big, big what if you know, know what's out there on the other teams. And I know – football field I know the scheme well and I know I was going to do my thing once I get on the field and come back Stephen Holder hey Marlon um you know this is like no disrespect to the Colts or anything but then well, I really think about like I wonder if you think about this just how running backs kind of get treated today <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying when it comes yeah. to money or just the draft or whatever um, what do you make of that and I mean I'm sure you're still living your dream, but it would be yeah. nice if things were a little different. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's tough, man. Um, hopefully, in a, in a few years, in the in the future, uh, it, it changed again. But right now, it's tough being a running back, and everybody can see about these contracts. But you just gotta be happy, be blessed, man, and, and take what you can get. <laughs> Wish TV. Marlon, I know a lot of people have been blowing up Twitter about, I can't wait for this Colts backfield. And I know it was the same story last season before your injury, but in your own words, how do you describe maybe how nasty this thing is going to be for other teams? Uh, this, this, this is going to be crazy. Uh, Cause once, once one guy gets tired, it's don't stop. Cause the next guy going to do the same thing. And, and the next guy is like, all of us have that one play thing like we always gonna just take one play and we go pop and go for 60 so every team got to be on their toes because we gonna keep running and got to be prepared for it 